frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Spirit Wars on the Fringe Radio Network. Its continuing mission to explore strange new truths, to seek out new life and new civilization, to boldly go where no Christian has gone before. Where we're going, we don't have a grid for most things that we will encounter. All we ask is that you maintain your close personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. In that you fear not strange new doctrines that may or may not be true, but that you hold fast to the word of God which is exceedingly past. As we encounter people from many dimensions, from many backgrounds, who are a part of this great and all-encompassing spirit world. Now, join me, the host and captain of this show, Michael Basham, as we set out to see what no man has ever seen. Well, hello there. Welcome. We are now live. Um, thank you, Johnny Iron, operating out of Portland, Oregon, at the trailer park at the end of the world on Fringe Radio Network and broadcasting from Hawaii in the mountains and recording an awesome interview live with my dear friend, Truth Sika, who has just released his new book. I just got the email and saw the invitation and everything looks beautiful that cover is gorgeous um we were so excited to have this talk it's actually the first interview i think on my show i've been out been able to come on your show before derek so this is a great honor and let's let's see if we can just touch everything in your book like as fast <laughs> as we can brother i went on How a Oh man, I, I'm doing great. I went on a uh, interview a little while ago with a friend of mine, and he's like, "Let's read the forward by George Maxwell." And then he started reading the he started reading the table of contents, and you see how long the table of contents is. And he was trying to read it like a sentence, and it was very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, thanks for hosting me on your platform. It's kind of weird because we are st still streaming on my platform as well, so you're like hosting my show now as well simultaneously. So. The Thanks more the merrier. We have to. Sure. We've got to get this word out, man. It's uh, it's desperate. It's it's needed. As Jordan said, one of the things he said, I really agree with. He's like, this is a this is a book that needed to be written. So, it's very timely. Yeah, the um, interesting thing, and he talks about it in the forward, and I need to look it up. But he compares my book to some other book that was written a long time ago. I. I have to figure out the name of it, but he's like, this book is very similar to a book that was put out in the 1800s, and that book was revolutionary for its time, and this book is very similar to that one. I'm like, wow, I need to figure out what book that is. I haven't looked it up yet. I've just been so busy, but you know, I definitely got to go back and look that up. So, Well, what's it like to, first of all, you've, you're doing your show, you're interviewing all these people. Jordan Maxwell, I mean, my gosh, like I, I remember listening to him back in 2009 on uh, Project Camelot and just his wealth of knowledge and dealing with the Illuminati and the occult and aliens and everything. And then going into Christian mysticism, you know, how do you b boil all that down into a book? What is that like? And how the heck did you even have time to do that while you're doing your full time show? Um. I just want to say this real quick. Somebody's saying that we have reverb. Let me know if it's if it's over the top reverb or it's just something little. Let me know, guys, and I'll try to fix it. Um, man, just you know what? I I just sit back and just the awe and wonder of God, man. You know, and it really just today just being kind of surreal. You know what I'm saying with this book coming out and um, just thinking about you know the Jordan Maxwell thing and not even him, but just everything, dude. Just lining up. You know, I, I'm with you. Like, I remember listening to Jordan Maxwell stuff and like, man, I wish I can talk to him. 
you know, and finding out who he was for the first time and just being so intrigued by his stories and his research and his experience. And then now he's he's a friend. You know what I'm saying? First of all, he's a, he's a friend. I can talk to him whenever I need to. Um, he did my freaking forward. And not just him, but Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. I have another guy who's like in town and wants to hang out, celebrities and stuff. I'm blown, dude. I don't deserve this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm happy to be here and I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. I understand manifestation. I understand God. I understand what he's capable of. I know that he's looking for people who can honor him. You know what I'm saying? And be trusted with, with this type of uh, material and platform. And I just want to, you know, make sure that I continue to give him all the glory and stuff. And, uh, it's really weird, dude. You know, like I'm going to be hanging out with somebody in, in a couple of days who I I was drawing pictures of this guy when I was in middle school. And now he's calling me, texting me, wanting to hang out. You know what I'm saying? Of Like these people, I'm just blown of like where God can take you. You know what I'm saying? Like the people and the doors that God can open that no man can open. And it's like just being faithful, you know what I'm saying, with it and diligent and being honest. And, dude, it just all comes back around. And God sees the work that nobody else sees that you do in the silence. Mm-hmm. And. You know, there's plenty of times when we probably should have, you know what I'm saying, given up and people turn their backs on you and, you know, make fun of you and call you names. But it's like, God's just like, man, stay faithful, man. Stay the course. Don't falter. Don't yeah. do it. Don't get off course. Stay consistent. I'm leading you. And as long as you do, like it comes back in the end as a reward. And it's like, again, he's opening up doors that no man can open. I'm just in a place of gratitude, even if all of those awesome things, like even if none of that is happens you know like i'm still in that place of gratitude that's a place that we live man seated with christ and it's the best place to be if i never experienced another supernatural encounter if i never talked to a celebrity if i never have any i have so much to be thankful for and i'm spoiled man you know what i'm saying and on many different levels my family my health my my friends man my finances my job what i get to wake up and do for a living it's a dream bream bro It's a dream. It really is. Well, now that you have a book, you can go on Sid Roth. Yeah. (laughs) He should have interviewed you years ago. It's next. It's coming. (laughs) Um, But seriously, um, it's it's very timely. Um, We we just lost uh, Henry Groover, the prayer walker. He just passed away. Uh, Neville Johnson passed away about a month or so ago. And uh, my grandmother also recently passed. So these people, you know, she was Don Basham's wife, reunited now at last. And in heaven but it's like we're we're in the age like where we are supposed to be catching these mantles and i really am proud to be able to work with you um to share these mantles with people and to just find other people who wants to be a leader who's you know the whole concept of spirit force too it's not follow me you know but it's like let's get as many people like you derek out there to Uh, continue to train and recruit yeah. people into this giant spiritual warfare situation. And it's not all warfare, but, you know, you discuss in your book, I, I, I guess we'll just go through some of the, <laughs> it's not going to be easy to get into everything in here, but you don't uh, have to just whatever stands out, ask the Lord and he'll show you something. <laughs> <'Cause> there's so <laughs> much, there's no way we could get through all of it. Something, hey, whatever no, you want, whatever it. you want to talk about, I'm cool with it. So, it. Um, we've talked about some of these subjects before I'm, I'm noticing towards the end Jezebel and that's amazing that you, you're tackling the big guns here like it's good thing you got some friends because <laughs> this is where you know the enemy comes after you and start exposing him like this yeah. um, well I just I, I the thing is I understand it now you know what I'm saying I under he's always been coming after us like it's always been there you know the, the path of good and evil and right and wrong and You know polarity like if you do something good bad comes back i mean good comes back if you do something bad and then the book really addresses that yeah. the whole ecosystem of how that stuff works and the devil mm-hmm. the devil has a role you got a job to do that's his yeah. he was created to do that you know and i and i explore that in the book and uh, we got a good relationship you know if i submit myself to god if if every area of my life is submitted to my father he can't touch me he got to ask permission Thanks. And if the father, if the father has something that he's opening up and I need to to learn or if I'm getting too prideful or, you know, my heart is uh, given into idolatry 
or you know what I'm saying, uh, elitism, the Lord is going to open up doors and allow for those spirits to come deal with me treacherously. And so I every day I have to examine myself, not just me. I'm this is universal. All of us And the book explores that and to, to really get a better understanding of how these, these things operate in our lives. And we're not a victim. You know what I'm saying? The most high. He's the bet. He knows what he's doing. He's the author and the finisher of this story. I couldn't write a better story, man. He did it. He even before the foundations of the earth, he wrote my story, scripted it. And it's like, look, this is your job for you to do. Stay the course, man. I got you. And he's saying that to each one of us. And I'm not I'm nobody special. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's for all of us. It's oh. universal principles and just sharing what's what I've learned that's helped me, you know? Well, the, the fact is you, you've decided uh, to be chosen. It says in the Bible, you know, that we are chosen, but you have to choose to be chosen. And you're one of those guys that day after day, uh, you just don't give up, man. And you're a good example. So let's get into uh, some of these angels, spirits, demons, communing with the dead, this sort of stuff that's very controversial, that the church Christians just don't touch with the 10 foot pole, you know? I actually listened to an interview this morning on Earth Oddity, kind of a Halloween podcast about a lady that was married to a pirate ghost. She actually had a formal marriage and then her health started to deteriorate and she got a deliverance. Wow. Um, you know, and some people just, and, and she said this, she was like the new agers, they just, they, they want to sell their books. They want to sell their thing. They're not going to tell you the dark side. They're not going to tell you that there's a danger. They're just going to be like, yeah, everything's good. So here you are giving people some, really some discernment, a lot of discernment in, in, in this manual, really. So yeah. what, just give us a little uh, preview about the dealing with just spirits that have passed on, the familiar spirits um, with, with angels, with demons. Yeah. Simple question. Are they all good? Can we trust them all? Like, can we just invite anything into our life? I mean, I can, you know, that's, <laughs> uh, I don't think anything is all anything. And that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of the ecosystem that these guys have a job to do. The angels that, you know, the word angel is, it translates to messenger. And again, we have to like get this idea out of our head that the Archangel Michael looks like, you know, the Catholic version that we've seen, this tall, beautiful, blonde headed man with a sword and wings that we think that's what Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, like all of these angels look like this. And then there's other angels, maybe the four living creatures of the seraphim, like the word angel just translates to messenger. And uh, and, you know, and and even just the more I examine myself and, and the book and it's kind of got me just questioning even what that is, I, you know, what they look like in appearance, like the demons are, are, are angels in a sense as well, because the demons carry a message too. the yeah. message. Hey, you better repent or I'm coming for you. God has said, if you go back to that sin, I'm coming for you. They got a message. You know what I'm saying? They have a role. So you know what? You get free from it. Hey, we coming back with seven times greater. Jesus done warned you. You didn't listen. Okay, we're coming back. That's their job. And if you do that, you're saying you're you're opening doors for, for these guys to come back in. They have a message, right? And they have a job. But if you're submitted to God again, man, the, everything works together for your good. And even those guys work together for your good. To chastise you, the Lord chastises those in which he loves. He corrects us in the correction is us, him giving us over to the other gods, him giving us over to our idols to so say, OK, you happy with that? That pornography addiction? You cool with that? OK, I'm going to give you over to that. Yeah, we truly are free to choose anything that we want. That's the scary thing is like people want to be told what to do. They don't want to have freedom and you're offering people a lot of freedom with the amount of different stuff that you get into um, that a lot of a lot of it I'm not even familiar with. I have very little understanding of plant medicine, but I was uh, listening to about how in the enemies camp, the elites are starting to use DMT and other things to channel and get messages from entities and they call them spirit astronaut astronauts which i love that psychonauts I, I want that psychonauts <laughs> yeah. you know they're like they darpa had these guys um go into the spirit realm using these uh different different medications and they all saw the same thing they would see these these reptilians or these reptoids or uh mantoids and it's like 
why can't Christians do that? Why do we have to stay in church? And, you know, like there's a, there's a movement growing, which you and I are both yeah. um, connected to Gil Hodges and the next agers. Yeah. They're going in the spirit all the time. I mean, I, I have so many groups on Facebook. They're like, Hey, you want to join us? We're going, we're going to travel now. And you know, Ian Clayton's space um, cadets, publicist. we call them space cadets. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, man. I mean, so what's your what what's your take on that? Like, what can people yeah. expect to learn? I mean, when they okay, read your so book any on that? any of these things, as you mentioned, plant medicines, right? And it's a big, it's controversial one. It's one that kind of sets me apart from a lot of different people. But it's yeah. again, like you know, and I've talked about this. Like, part of me was like, okay, like I'm in, like I'm neck and neck with Joyce Meyer right now for this book. Like literally, I'm about this book is going. I'm prophesying this book's going to beat out Joyce Meyer before the night is over, and so people who are buying Joyce Meyer's books are going to see this book. And I talk about some of this controversial stuff. So part of me is like, you know what? You are running in circles with Gil Hodges. You know, you are. There are a lot of Christians who who want to talk to you and, and interview you. Now your knowledge is coming across, and uh, so let's just kind of hold back on some of that f- weird stuff. Let's hold back on the alien stuff. Let's hold hold back on the kundalini talk let's hold back on the plant medicine because when they see that they're not going to have you come speak and part of me was like okay let's hold back on it but it's like no hold on Mm -hmm. like this is what makes me who i am or whatever platform that i've built was because i'm being open and authentic to talk about this stuff when the rest of the people wouldn't like i have i have a bunch of christian friends who are into all of this stuff but they would dare not speak of it because of the scrutiny that they would get from their church family, the the scrutiny that they would get from their bosses. Their bosses like, "Oh, you do plant medicine? Really? Let's go have you drug tested." You know what I'm saying? Ooh, and so yeah. they can't speak about it and they won't speak about it, so I have to. You know what I'm saying? So and at the at early on it was like all funny and fringe and, "Oh, you're the Christian who does plants and oh, you believe the plants are alive and all that kind of stuff." But now, I mean, you're the Christian who astral travels. This stuff is, you were always, part of being fringe is about being a forerunner, man, and and stepping out there early on. And uh, and when you get made Mm -hmm. fun of, you get laughed at and things like that, but eventually it catches on. The pastors are now, you you can have a, a Baptist pastor who can headline a sermon about the Illuminati now. And you can have a Baptist pastor who headlines sermons about the Kundalini. They talk about the New World Order. They talk about the Nephilim spirits. You remember when this stuff was just brand new when we were into this over 10 years ago. You were laughed at yeah. and scoffed. The Illuminati, no such thing. Or look at Alex Jones bringing out the whole sex scandals with you know, all the stuff going on with children and pedophiles and stuff. And Oh, that's just a make-believe. No, it's coming out. Like the stuff that we've been talking about for years and believed in, now it's becoming mainstream knowledge and the pastors are formulating sermons on it so it becomes you know um accepted but we i just have to be the one to like not let go because like usually when everyone i have this weird spirit to where like i'll put something out and i know i know that i'm a forerunner and it's friends but then when everybody flocks to it i'm like okay i'm done with that on to the next one Right. Whether it's a band, you find this band that's like amazing and then they blow up and like, okay, you can have that band or a football team that nobody likes. And then they get a star player and everybody you're like, oh, I'll take that. Right. So uh, I think that's what it is about a lot of knowledge and things like that, especially being a seer, one who's able to see in the spirit, see what the Lord's doing. Um, man, you, we get that. And we just can't we can't uh, walk in the flesh with it. We have to just be obedient with it and understand our place and not get offended or think that we own something because all of this stuff is is taken off you know the stuff we've been talking about for years is now everyone's talking about it you know and it's now accepted and in in the plant medicine thing it will be it will be something just like the just like marijuana is now uh, in the conversation for, for like christians to smoke right. pot because it's legal Take and gritty weed all that kind of yeah. stuff you know so years ago mm-hmm. that was not flying you know so i think it's the same way with plant medicine there's a lot of research of like it what it does for your body and what it does for your mind and helping you on a small dose of uh psilocybin mushrooms or ayahuasca encounter whatever the case is um there it's a medicine and medicines aren't to be abused medicines are for people who are sick right and it's the same way we're talking about medicines that alter your consciousness when when we were teenagers we would go to the walmart or whatever and we would steal big packs of uh robitussin gel tabs 
and we would eat the whole pack of Robitussin Delta and we would trip our heads off. We would just Wait. be so high. <laughs> Don't teach the children here, Derek. <laughs> Robitussin gel. So that's a medicine. It's for those who are sick. But if you abuse yeah. it, yeah. yeah, it turns right. into a poison, right? Right. And I, yeah, I think it it's the same way. Mm-hmm. I, I, if you do the, the due diligence in the research, you'll see the you know science is making you know leaps and bounds when it comes to the research with plant medicine, especially psilocybin, which. And so for that, I mean, again, like, would I be like the secret society? Like, we have the keys, we have the secret, but we have them locked away only for the chosen few. And you have to join my Patreon to to get this info. No, it's it's freely freely given, man. Like, I, like something but that blessed my some life. Pretty cool stuff in in your Patreon. For sure, for sure, there. for sure. But um, I, you know, just like if it's something life changing, you want to share it, man. Like it's just like it, it blessed me, it helped me, and it's helping so many other people. So for me to act like because the Christians might judge me or whatever the case is, I'm going to keep it to myself. I find that fascinating. You know? Yeah, I've never used anything um, besides like an occasional cigarette or like uh, I like to in moderation enjoy a whiskey. But I mean, that's just interesting to me. I don't even I can't pass judgment on it because I just don't know. But it does ring true. It's like, well, why does God have this? And well, yeah, obviously think... there are people who get drunk and kill people and, and it's, their, it's you know, legal <laughs> and, and people are allowed to smoke two packs a day of cigarettes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that you can get high off of the spirit of God without anything. You know, I think that's that needs to be. Um, emphasized yeah but uh, we do have technologies like why are we allowed to use phones you know we there are phones there's artificial intelligence that um, maybe we're gonna take that too we're about to release a a, a meditation about that (laughs) some of my friends are doing so yeah it's like yeah I don't know all of these things are tools people get stuck on one thing and then looking at all the other topics that you're sharing you know, we're ready to go to Orion. You know, we're ready to go to space. We're ready to do stuff. And then everybody is just like where they get stumbled. And, you know, this is why I kind of compartmentalize. Like I don't talk about everything with everybody mm-hmm. because I want everything. But I notice with certain people, you can only talk about certain things. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I try not to um, force not anything you, on, on. I try just trying to force it. I'm not going to try to like interject it into the conversation or whatever. Yeah. With the Internet. Right. You don't and, have an agenda to try to force people to believe any of this. No, stuff. you don't have to agree with me. You don't have to agree. I can, you know, I've been laughed at and scoffed my, the majority of my Christendom. You know what I'm saying? So it's just yeah. nothing new. And and, it- and and I will tell you, I think the majority of the people who listen and, and, and resonate with anything, friends, not just me, just the friends, they they feel the same way. They're at parties mm-hmm. and everybody's talking about football and they want to talk about spirit travel. They're talking about, you yeah. know, the race that's coming up this weekend and they want to talk about demons and how, how do we effectively cast out demons at church gatherings? Oh, that was me. Totally. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they would dude. say, well, we'll just leave that for Sunday. Pastor will speak on it. I'm like, no, he's, you know, this is what I live and breathe, man. You know, and just even early yeah. on, you're like, he's just yeah. too, he's just too much. I wasn't forceful with it. I'm just, I'm just interested in what, you know, we've seen revival happen that way, though, man, just being persistent and uh, just going after God when everyone else don't really care to. And that's, you know, Amen. that's how revival happens, you know, it starts with you. So, wow, yeah, it really does. That's what I tell people too. Is it's all about relationship. Can would you agree that the main your main uh, focus with what you're doing, your ministry, your book, your show, uh, all the media, what drives you and what the goal is? Is it to bring people closer to the Lord and and to just even the New Agers, even the psychics, even the astrologers, to just kind of get underground and you know undercover subverting taking their you know like like solid snake and metal gear just yeah like, it's funny because yes that is the goal but i speak about it openly so i'm like outing myself <laughs> hi i'm here i'm not going anywhere you know yeah and uh did, but Carrie yeah, Cassidy, Ur- did she catch on to you when you interviewed her did you when, feel like she no when she interviewed me it was very oh, standoffish she interviewed you at first also Okay, oh, that yeah, oh, that okay. interview was kind of standoffish, and she was like, "Oh, you're a preacher. You're talking too fast." And 
She was like, because I was just kept going about, you know, the Bible and the Lord. Did she interrupt you like every five seconds? When she interviewed me on her, to her audience. But when she okay. came to mind, she, I was complimenting her. And she's like, oh, I just love to be here. And she was well received. You know, it was very strange. But yeah, yeah. man. Um, but even hats off to her because, yeah. you know, yeah, I, I, I mean, like her work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, watching her on Jordan Maxwell, those interviews, you know, changed mm -hmm. my life and blew my mind. It opened me up to a lot of new stuff. And it, I told him, I said, manifestation. I want to I'm going to be interviewed by Carrie Cassidy one day. You know, this was in, man, 2010, tw 2009, 20, watching these documentaries and how big they were still at the early yeah. ages, early stages of YouTube, you know, and uh, and uh, and fast forward a couple of years, you know. I um, was interviewed by her and had her on my show. I've talked to all the, the researchers, and it's crazy, man, the, what, the doors that God will open for you. I'm still blown away. I could just, when I think about it, it makes me want to cry because it's so awesome how good God is, you know? Wow. Yeah. Well, I've, I'm, I can't say anything except amen, brother. And, um, and you just it, had a baby, it, man. How was that? Let's talk about that really quick. Congratulations, brother. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, speaking Talk about, about that, happy how was that? I mean, crying. that's a that's a spiritual experience in and of itself, yeah. right? Oh my gosh! Wow. And then she was born on Yom Kippur, exactly the moment of Yom Kippur was when she came out. When uh, it starts in the in, at sunset. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was there. There's some crazy stuff. And, and our pastor that married us, yeah. that was his anniversary, also with his wife. Wow. And they came and I Instagrammed all this stuff. You can go to my Instagram guys, Seer Facts, and you can see great pictures like this one. I don't know if you can see that, but I noticed a weird similarity. Oh, we <laughs> did. Meyer I think we might've talked about that. Yeah. I don't well, know if we're going to get in trouble for that, but, but yeah, she, we, I she, share a lot of my personal life um, for better, for worse and just humor. You know, I can't uh, help it sometimes. You got to laugh. Otherwise you want to cry. Yeah, um, that's why I like. That's why I like coming on with you. I, I, you know, what I'm saying, let my hair down a little bit and just talk about this. We stuff. talk forever. Our interviews go for like, but like the normal average length is like two and a half hours. Three hours. Yeah. <laughs> Three hours. Yeah. yeah. So, um, am I right in? Because I've known you for a few years now. I'm very, very blessed to have known you since I started podcasting. Thanks to Johnny and getting into this this kind of new realm seeing like going through guests and doing interviews and learning and obviously you're a great artist as well i see people in the chat saying like i want more music for you man and i'm like dude yeah i know we need you to make so much more music but like in your book do you seem to do you feel like you are summing up up until now the accumulation of where you have attained in your mountaintop kind of climbing experience in the journey. Do you feel like this is almost like a captain's log, if you For will? Sure. Yeah, you know, when I started writing it, I was like, you know what, I want this to be my, you know what I'm saying, Magnus Opum. I want it to be like my, I want it to be my secret teachings of all ages, which is a book awesome. about this big. It's definitely not that big, but, but it could have been, like you said, because you were talking about like all the different subjects that I cover and each yeah. subject can be a book in and of itself. And I had to kind of catch myself. I know. <laughs> and I had to talk to people and get counsel. I talked to Berlin and Berlin's like, nope, wrap it up, wrap it up. You know, cause you, that's oh, probably okay. five books. You know what I'm saying? That I'm okay. trying to write. Um, okay. but I want it, that, that book is a, just an overview. It's essentially, it could be a coffee table book where you pick it mm -hmm. up and you say, you know what? I'm going straight to elementals. I want to learn about these spirits. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go straight to that part. I want to go straight to UFOs and aliens. And so it's, it's not a chapter yes. book where you have to read at the beginning. You can pick it up and read anywhere. And, um, and yes. that, those are the books I've liked. Like I was really big into Tex Mars. He put out a book like that full of oh. pictures and stuff. And you just flip through it and stop on a picture and just start reading, man. And that's kind of what I wanted to put out. And um, like each, each, uh, each subject man could be a book, you know? So I, I gave an overview of a lot of things. Um, and it, and I could like, even when I was talking about, you know, angelic encounters or mystical experiences, like how much do I put in there? Do I put them all? Well, that's a whole book, you know, um, do I save it for another book? I just wanted to kind of give an overview with this book. It, it is an overview, but I, if there was a formula to it, the formula is, 
uh, the name of the book is Spirit Realm, Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God to paint a picture of the ecosystem again of how the spirit realm operates in us through us above us below us how it affects us uh microscopically on our skin like this spirit war that's being taking place on many levels and dimensions right so i wanted to kind of paint a picture of that the sovereignty of god just kind of showing how god uses all of this stuff for your good like all of everything, this whole war, uh, this battle, this beautiful song and dance is scripted for your good. You are more than a conqueror. You are a victor in all of this to understand that. And so you can get some uh, some clarity and it help you walk in victory by just knowing who you are and whose you are. Right. Understanding that covering just this whole list of how they operate, naming as, as many spirits that I've uh, encountered or types of spirits anyway cherubim seraphim the malak you know what i'm saying the Raphaim. there's just so many different ones elementals shades even each each subject has so much knowledge but just kind of giving you this overview how they interact with us and then spiritually as a son and daughter of the most high how you can tap into your god-given spiritual abilities and giftings to interact and how we're entertaining spirits unaware and we don't even know it. We're being uh, invaded by outside forces. We get around certain people and all of a sudden we feel scared around a certain person. We get a good vibe. I mean, you know those people you hang around and you just feel good when you're around them because they got so much of the presence of God and you can pick that up just by the way that they live their life. And so how to interact with that, you know what I'm saying, your spiritual abilities, giftings. And I, I relate it back to ESP extrasensory perception mm -hmm. and I kind mm -hmm. of marriage the two of how uh, we are able to, to see spirits, hear spirits, the spirit of God, the spirit of the accuser, the accuser of the brethren. And then Jesus yeah. interjects and says, my sheep know my voice and the strangers, they will not follow how to key in on his voice in the midst of all this. So it's an overview and then how you can practically step in there and interact in a safe yes. way. And how we're all like we're we're probably all being contacted and being intercepted with empathy and intuition and stuff like that. But it's not until yes. you step out in faith and you ask somebody, hey, is there some mm -hmm. do you know a man named Jack? I don't even I don't know where I'm getting this from. We see the psychics doing it. There's people in Christendom who is who's moving into prophetic right. very strong. So it's a tutorial about how to uh, sense those spirits in your life and being able to smell them see them hear them all of these wow. different ways that we're able to tap into the spirit realm so it's in a sense it is a training manual You're teaching people how to be batman of the spirit <laughs> like every single possible tool yep. um a lot of christians are like a one a one gift show you know and they know everything about just one thing. And that's great. Like, I love Ruthie Andrews talking about the elementals. Every time yeah. she comes on Dan Duvall, I'm like, yes, I want more of that. And then it, it encourages me to go into the spirit. And because where we live, there's so much of that. There's so many weird Hawaiian ancient spirits. And yeah. it's fun to go and, and to engage with that but scary. And then, but I can think back to like, okay, well, I read in Truth Seeker's book. Or I heard uh, one of his interviews where um, someone who helps heal people that were in SRA, they found that the elemental thing is actually they're waiting for the sons of God to come and dominate that area, you know? So it makes me like really encouraged to get in there and, and take ground. And I've lived in Japan, Taiwan, China, yeah. you know, this so is you my understand latest pr country. Principalities you know, and powers, right? I know. I mean, I've had experience with them. I'll say yeah. I've made lots of mistakes, but you know, Henry Groover will be in the prayer walker in Japan, walking around praying all over. That's a real thing. Like walking around praying, being in the spirit. It's, it's really good. And now with podcasts and listening to the truth, you know, you can be getting so much. It's almost like setting up a force field around you instead of just sort of zoning out, like you can be just in the word of God, like communicating and communing. And when you listen to Derek, when you listen to some of his guests that he has on, 
a lot of the people are maybe are, are more of like, I would say you're taking ground when you go into some of these, these, uh, areas that most Christians, I mean, I don't have the energy to even try to interview half of the people that you go after, but people need to fund you. They need to continue to support you. And I think by buying their, buying your book, this is going to be a, a way to encourage Derek to climb many more mountains, to add even more to the list of what he's attained. And this very crucial information that, gosh, I mean, there's, I don't even know where to start with half of it, except all of us are interested in aliens. Maybe we can focus on that for a second. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. The alien thing is, I talked to a person in the Air Force recently about that, and she's like, yeah, I looked at the budget for Space Force, and it's humongous. I'm so sure. <laughs> it might be a good time to even join the Air Force if you want to go Space Force in the future. Yep. Learn a, learn about some kind of a skill. Maybe we're going to start going to other planets pretty soon, you know, once we take care of the battle here, I believe, and I was, I was ranting last night on the show, um, that the angels go to the four winds in earth and on in heaven to bring the people to get resurrected. So that means they might even be sending angels to catch the people who are off planet, like doing secret space program stuff. What do you what do you think about that? Do you like do you, do you go there very much? Like with actual physical, like we're going to go to space, we're going to deal with this stuff. Um, a little bit, and, and the spiritual aspect of that. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I have some friends who claim to be um, space jumpers, like literally, like physically. You know, not spirit travelers, but they literally are in secret space programs and been taken as children. Laura Eisenhower, shout out to her. I've even had her on my podcast. Oh, yeah. Dwight Eisenhower's granddaughter um she even liked and liked my post for the book thank you um hey yeah so i mean there's people who have these stories you know and um i I don't know if i believe that the missing time and i was there for 22 years and i came back and i was six years old again like there's some weird far out stuff (laughs) but hey who's to say i don't really know but um you know i will say that you want to watch star wars watch the star wars series and uh and it there's so much uh spiritual wisdom and uh secret space stuff that's you know they've been new about this stuff they didn't just make that up they got that from somewhere this is something that's been going on for a very long time and they're just kind of leaking it out to the public through the movies and through things like that so what star wars has so so many gems about the angels and traveling from planet to planet and star system and Um, I've quoted a lot of that stuff in my music and when I was going through my spiritual awakening like that movie just blew my head off you know just watching the series because I really sat down and watched them all from you know the new ones until the to to the older ones or whatever one to what is it one to six or something like that Um, and it was just chock full of so much stuff that I was experiencing that I was reading in the Bible uh, hearing these other people talking about on on their uh, experiences and the CE5 contact initiative, you know what I'm saying, going out there. So mm-hmm. the, um, the 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 alien thing from from like where I approached it from in the book, you know, is 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 definitely an angel thing. And I say that okay. you know, if you um if you're studying angelology, eventually you're going to be led to the book of Enoch and eventually right. you're going to be led to aliens. Now, in mm-hmm. the Christian realm, we know that the aliens are evil. The aliens, they want to abduct mm-hmm. you. They're coming to harvest your semen. Uh, they want to put babies inside what? of you. Yeah, they. in the Christian realm, you're going to hear the fear. Ain't nobody putting no babies inside of me. They're going to put a baby in you. <laughs> they... <laughs> <laughs> Truth they, seeker prophesies. Listen, <laughs> live radio. <laughs> I rebuke that in Jesus' name. But um, no, but I'm just saying from from the Christian standpoint, you're only going to hear the evil alien agenda. You're right. not gonna you're not gonna okay. hear right. You're well, not that's gonna the fringe. I mean, let's just be honest. The fringe radio network side, not the website, but the fringe fringianity, fringe Christianity. It's all aliens. It's all evil. You know. I, I know I'm, I'm on the I don't think that they're evil I think that they're angelic I think yeah, that yeah. you know I think mm-hmm. you know what and there's so, so much that I left out of the dang book you know they were cast <laughs> they were cast out of it. there's so much in there but there's no way I could capture it all like they were cast out of heaven they were yeah. kicked out of the the heavens is the sky the heavens is space they were forbidden to fly and travel the cosmos they were kicked out mm-hmm. because they rebelled 
They're here on the earth. Dealing, they are the fallen angels, but they're not flying around in spacecraft. They're here in the spirit realm, in the ethers, messing with mankind, climbing on men and women when they're asleep, messing with them sexually as incubus and succubus. They're here right. getting people drunk, wanting them to commit revelries and murders and things like that. You ain't got to worry about no demons flying around in the night sky. I'm sorry. I don't believe it. And I and I give you, you know, some some scriptures and some reasons why I believe that they were kicked out. I, we just got to have we need to talk about the good aliens or the good angels that travel. And we talk about ships. I don't even think for the most part I've probably seen some ships. But for the most part, what I've seen, these these what we would call ships are alive. Like these are right. entities that are moving and morphing and flying through the heavens and they're fire and they stop and they say hello and they communicate. And I, I covered all of that in the book, man. Um, but there's nobody having that conversation. It's all the evil right. alien abductions and they put a, they pull an implants out of people. And I do go into that a little bit, even though I'm not a proponent, but if anybody is, is evil and traveling the disguise, it's man. You got to watch out for man. They're evil. Their hearts are evil, wicked and deceitful. Who could know it unless it's been renewed by the presence yeah. of God? And so a lot of people who have these abduction scenarios, they're getting uh, abducted on ships. They're waking up and there's little green men on the ships. But they look in the corner and there's a man wearing military garments watching the I whole know. thing what take is place. That? Who yeah, is that? that's so weird. Yeah. So it's the yeah. my lab uh, abductions, military my induced lab. abductions. Yeah which I believe is was created to push hysteria within this field so that when you see a, a, a light in the sky traveling and moving around, you, you'll run. You won't try to flag it down or wave and say hello or, you know, what's Incubus, the song mm. Incubus says, uh, I'm, you know, I, I signal them with my lighter. You know what I'm saying? And fla there's people who have flashed their headlights and these things will start communicating with them through flashing headlights and the angelic encounters and stuff. But um going back to like the the war and everything that's that's happening above us in space for us like um what's his Edgar Casey believes that the battle of Armageddon was going to be fought in outer space so hence your space force but i don't think that they're bad wow. guys out there i think that the bad guys are running the government i think that they're uh feeding us fake food i think that they're mm. feeding us uh, plastic that they're saying that it's rice. I think that they're feeding us fast food that has wood chips in it and plastic water bottles that they're selling us. They're taxing us and arresting us if we're collecting rainwater in our backyards. If we if we grow a garden in our backyard, you can be arrested and taxed on that food. Like these right. are the uh, these are the bad guys. Those guys out there. I look above. Where does my help come from? The chariots of the Most High. When Elijah. Yeah. Was was traveling and they were being. It was a lie. It's a story in, in Second Kings, I believe it is. First and Second Kings. It's it's in the book, but they were being tracked by an army, and it was Elijah and the young man. As if you look that up, you're able to find it in the scriptures. But it's in the book, and um, they're being tracked by this army. And the young man wakes up, and the army is all around him. And the dude panics. We're done. We're done. There's an army all the way around us. And he said, and Elijah said, "Look, don't freak out." For there are more that are for us than those who are against us. He's like, what are you talking about? It's me and you against a whole army of people. And he puts his hand on him and he prays that God would open the eyes of his understanding. And immediately all around in, in the, the hills and in the mountains around him, he's seen chariots as a fire in, in the hills around him. And he was able to see these craft. He was able to see these angelic messengers. The word chariot, it's not a horse drawn buggy being pulled by horses. A chariot comes from the Hebrew word Merkaba or Merkaba. It means vehicle. And if we know anything about spirituality in the spirit realm, uh, uh, you know, you can, it's believed you could turn your body into a Merkaba or a vehicle of light by activating your wheels of light. By location, so we're, we're traveling, getting, traveling in the spirit. So you're you're bridging like what we're dealing with, you know, the disclosure project, Stephen Greer, and C five research, and uh, with the Bible. SETI and my my labs, and the super soldier program, and Illuminati stuff. And you're saying that as Christians, we can actually somehow travel in the spirit, and even in a militaristic way, like 
I mean, God is the God of battles. I know everybody wants to be peaceful all the time, but he is coming to take back this planet and save those little babies in dungeons. And for sure, you know, that's what we're, we're fighting to take. He, I mean, we won through the cross, when, but see, it seems like we're when, actually, when, when, when he like comes back, there and gets done, you know, when he comes back, I do believe that there, there will be a physical second coming. And then yeah. all of the nations of the earth will join together to fight against this threat from above. All the space forces will come together to fight against Christ and his angels that are coming back. And we're going to be Gosh. caught up into the sky to fight with them. Right. And, um, and and the kingdoms of this world, this is their kingdom. Trump, these this is their kingdom. They don't they're not going to give this up easily. They're not just right. going to hand it over to King Jesus. They take the reins. I'm sorry. They're going to fight tooth and nail. So when, when I there's think an, Trump an, an, will give invader, it over to Jesus, though, I think. It, but it's the idea of. Freedom. Well, let's just use somebody it's else. Important. Let's just use Kim Jong Un. Would he give it up? Would you know what I'm saying? Who, who any any oh, yeah, person, any government. Any, yeah. any government that you think is not going to give up the reins to Jesus? Um, yeah, it can happen. Sorry. It's like and have you, we've all been there. Like you've worked with even in some ministry or some job where somebody's got a control freak yeah. attitude and it doesn't matter how nice they are, how spiritual they are. It's like when it comes down to it, it's all about power. It's all about control. Man, we get, and we get big headed with a look. I've been to churches with 17 members and these people don't yeah. got people assigned and tasked. And you got a guy I've seen guys in front of the doors with AKs and guns while the pastor is reading the Bible. We got to watch over the man of God. There's a, the enemy is out to get him. And like, just these weird, like you got 17 what members. Kind of churches have you been to? <laughs> I've been to some weird churches in the South, bro. There's a bunch of them. They're side yeah, by no, side. I mean, I've, I've never been to any weird churches. I just joined the children of God for a couple of years. That's and... pretty weird, bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to say, I wanted to mention this because I just realized you're from Mobile. Um, we, my grandfather's mentor, the mystic mentor, uh, Rufus Mosley, uh, all of his history, everything's there in Mobile. He's buried there. Um, a, a gentleman named Gregory Camp, who I want to interview, wrote a book about his life and republished a lot of his articles. And I bring this up because I think where you are is very special. Like the fact that you've been doing this in your specific location you know, nobody thinks about the the fact that actually your city is a really spiritually supercharged yeah. position that you have that and you're working with. I mean, you have some amazing community around you as well. It's just amazing. But yeah, uh, Rufus Mosley, there may have been people that you're kind of carrying on those torches. You didn't you you may not have known yet, but we'll talk about him. Um, let's let's stay on the course with your book, though. I don't want to uh, miss a single <laughs> moment of it because you t you talk about just very specifically like pure topics here, just fear and power and love as a whole topic. Elaborate on on why after all of this different stuff, you're just going to suddenly be able to just boil it down to something. Yeah. So, so simple. Well, um, so that, so, so that part at the end of the book there is kind of just like an overview of a list. It's almost like a, a demonology, but for spirits. And then we're just talking about when we say spirits, we're talking about essences, feelings and vibrations that these spirits come with. Right. Um, and there's a bunch of them named now. These aren't, these aren't, you know, the crazy demonology stuff by naming out some of these demons. I didn't really get into too much of that in that part. That part is an overview of kind of like where the Bible mentions the spirit of love or the spirit of peace or the spirit of heaviness, the spirit of whoredom, mm. you know, all of these different ones that these are essences that we walk in. They're vibrations that attach themselves to you. And um, and, and there's, yes. there's good ones and positive ones and negative ones, you know, and, and selling yourself short, walking in fear, fear, fear to speak your truth, fear of authority, mm. fear of uh, failure. You know what I'm saying? And all of these ways where we're like we're like um, kept in bondage to some of these spirits, man. And so for us to just yeah. know what they are and get familiar with with what an essence is or a spirit, these spirits are essences. They appear before God to come out and do something in the earth. And I give many examples, not just the Job example, which we all know with Satan and the other spirits going to and fro and say, hey, can I go down and mess with this guy? 
You know, uh, there's many examples in the Bible and there's many examples where God allowed these bad spirits. Again, they are like the spirits of retribution, the, the, the law of polarity. Like you put your hand to the fire, you get burned. You know, it's right. there has to be some type of correspondence there. And it is the, the, the way that God governs the universe and it all works together. God don't leave his throne and come down here and chastise you. He's got a good order set up to where, you know, it kind of works by itself. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Just keeping things uh, according to his rules. It's not about control. It's about like if you... Don't listen. You know you're gonna get no. your hand burned. You're these gonna, laws, are, the, his law good. is is beautiful. His law is the Bible yeah. says his law is perfect. Like he said, this is perfect. He's done. It's finished. He he had this finished before the foundations of the of the earth. That he he knew. You know this whole song and dance with mankind and how we get to choose. We're not we're not like the angels. We're not forced to worship and then we're kicked out of heaven if we just rebel right. or whatever the case. We get to choose, take our own free will and say, you know what? There's a lot of different things that I can be doing right now, Father, but I want to honor you with my breath. I want to yes. honor you with my heart. I want to honor you with my youth and what what you know what I'm saying vigor that I have within my bones. And I'm going to honor you with with what I listen to, with what I entertain, all of that. That's worship, yes. man. That's worship because we get to choose to come before him. Well, we could choose so much other stuff, but trust me, nothing's worth it. It's just come straight to him. <laughs> Spend time with him. And through that, Amen. you know, he, I think he orchestrates the angelic messengers for you to interact and encounter. I really don't now I, I, I'm, I've had some interesting encounters, but I don't, I don't go straight to an angel. I won't. I, I, like I've had some crazy okay. downloads, but for the most part, it, it, I go t to the father. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I signed the three plumb lines from uh, Gil, and the um, first one is about the cross of Yeshua. The next one is love, honor, and respect everyone. And three is ask the Father. And and that's really what I do when I go in the Spirit. I say, Father, whatever you have for me, I'm open. Whatever it is, what you want me to experience that you would allow me versus to, like, go and try to summon these angels or try to interact with an elemental I asked the father, right. he's, he, he's like sovereign over all that stuff. He has the ability to make them appear. Hey, I said, go up here for truth seeker. Like he has the ability to just speak the word and let it be done. So if I'm like asking my father, like, dad, I know you love me, right? Will you let me see one of those angels that fly through the night sky, the, the cherubim? I know they have, I know they're busy. They got stuff to do, but can I see one just for a few minutes? I love you so much, you know, and just just like you would a regular father, man. And the father loves to bless their and he's children. Like, no, you better, no, you better I, sweep the floor. And, and if I showed you, I'd have to kill you. Car, most of us, my boots, son. Most of us have that view of God. He'll never show me yeah. those things, you know. But he loves to, man. Uh, Jeremiah thirty three three, you know. There's uh, the Lord says, "Come unto me." calling to me i will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know and cannot find out and so the mystery schools and a lot of these other esoteric and occultism and stuff like that they're uh, simon the sorcerer which i go into that at the beginning of the book they're trying to get t t into these realms by other means and the only means is through a life laid down to the father through a life of servitude servants service to others over service to self making sure that you have everyone's best interest in your mind versus your own and as long as you have clean hands and, and a pure heart the lord will allow you to come and sit upon his hill and sup with him and he's longing for people to show this stuff he wants to blow our minds he wants us oh, yeah. to look at the heavens and open them up. He wants us to stare at the mountains and be able to see these whatever, man, to be able to gaze in nature and see the spirits working and doing what they what they were created to do, man. Like he's looking for people, yeah. you know, so it's not like I'm special because I've seen the angels. No, he's looking. They were above my head the whole time. And all I had to do was do this. And just look he said, up. He's like, I've got a lot more to tell you guys, but you can't even bear, you know, any of that stuff. And he said, like, okay, if you believe Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you be, believe my words? So we have to to remember and, and spend time in the Word, and then expect Him to give us more, and then find out all this other crazy stuff is real. Like you talk about fairies. Um, I I have a fairy story, but I want to hear. Uh, and I'll tell it briefly. You know, this is not about Go ahead, my fairy you got, No, because you got to get the book to hear my fairy story. Now, 
Oh, I'm joking. Do you believe in fairies, or is that? I, I had an encounter, man, for sure. I've had an encounter that I that I, it, it had to be. It's some. If it was, who knows? Now, were they true seeker fairies? Aren't real? Okay, pixies. Okay, let's call them pixies. Okay, nymphs. Oh, what? There's a whole variety. I don't know. They didn't come to me and say, hello, we are the fairies. We are the sugar plum. Like, they didn't do that, but I've had mystical encounters come with... play with us, Derek. Come play. <laughs> well, what was your encounter? I'll talk about friends. mine, but let's... I, it's my mother-in-law's. So I'm going to interview her soon. She, she recently, we sat down um, for breakfast with my wife and our little baby, Sienna Rose. Uh, and, and she was like, yeah, well, I never told you this really but i actually used to see this little fairy when i was a little girl and she used to come in my room and and talk to me and she just described the whole thing like with so much detail like physical detail yeah. interacting with the environment communicating with her and just like this has been my best friend and the old and she had it's <laughs> just like what and like like she wants to she knew she could share it with me because I wouldn't judge her. Like a lot of our church friends, he's like, nope, they're not going to be able to handle that. They'll, they'll be like L.A. Marzulli, like, this is the Nephilim. We need to stop them. The, the giants of Genesis 6, you know, all, all he talks. And, um, but, but we're both very similar in that. We like to know what's real. And if there's good fairies, I'd like to know about that. I think we can test the spirits, as it says in the Bible. But what if there were ways to invite a little bit more of that kind of an encounter into your life mm -hmm. to experience things. Not that you have to be seeking it all the time, but if you made space for it, which I haven't been making that much space for stuff, but my own personal experience recently, my wife told me she had a very vivid dream that there was this, this spaceship that was alive that I had been training. And it was like, it had the face of a dog, but it was a cigar shaped kind of a boat shaped thing. And we were sending it out on a mission and I had trained it and, and it suddenly flew up into the sky really fast. And then all these other birds and, and flying animals like joined it. And we were kind of sad, like, oh, he's going to do the mission that we trained him to do. And she told me the dream. She's like, you ever had a vision of a dog spaceship? I'm like, no. And she's like, you were so close to it. It was like your best friend. And you were so sad that it was going. And I'm like, I guess we're doing stuff that we just don't know what we're doing in the spirit. You know, our flesh just can't handle it. So that's where, you know, yes, it's simple. Come into spirit with God, relationship with God, but then read truth seekers book, spirit realm, learn about angels, demons, and all these different things that I still think it's so trippy that Jordan Maxwell wrote the intro because that's just beautiful. That shows that's really symbolic. Actually. Dude, he there was like we're, seven. We're, we're, he we're wrote friends. like seven pages or something. That you know, that yeah. guy. I just we've all been praying for him. Like even Carrie Cassidy seemed to be praying for him. Like she was like, we have to, we have hope, right? No, we don't have any hope. <laughs> Back yeah, like ten years ago. Yeah. So I think you have really blessed him as in a way like as a spiritual uh son kind of to bring him to to see that there is hope you know the next generation is carrying my work cares yeah, about what sure. i've done and even as i'm uh passing on the torch you know i know there that it's in good hands you know that's that's just proof that he seven pages is just amazing oh yeah and we won't try to get right now but where do you want to go next like where um do you feel this is also going to lead since this book, you obviously have so much to share so much to say people need to read it. Mm -hmm. You know, can we expect a sequel? Is there going to be more in this journey or do you think God is all done with truth seeker? Huh? Um, well, um, as far as like writing another book or whatever the case is, um, there's definitely going to be other books. I mean, the, the, even the whole section at the end of the book is, uh, is about how to operate in the spirit and how to, you know, find out your spiritual abilities and uh, to work and flow in the quickening of the spirit, to work and flow in the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, word of faith and things like that, that God has given us and how to discern it. Um, and so a part of me is just like wanting to take that and kind of maybe make it a course and kind of go into even more detail. That's 15 pages. You know what I'm saying? At the end, so I really went in on that and, and it was fun. Wow. I love that subject. My, I love seeing people 
tap into that for the first time. That's one of the most beautiful things we do on the School of the Mystics when we get enough people and the atmosphere is just right. We break down into groups and we practice prophesying over one another. And to see somebody for the first time wow. who's never done it, but they've been, but it's been with them their whole life. And they've never been in a safe environment where they can practice prophesying or asking the Holy Spirit. What would you say to to this brother? And just kind of listening and how the imagination works and how God speaks, finding that out for themselves and stepping in it. It's beautiful. So we do that on the School of the Mystics. And I just I want to I definitely want to turn that into like a bigger, more evolved course. And I'm working with some people on that. So that's probably something that's going to be an offshoot spring out of the book. Um, but I have some other courses and stuff. I'm really ready to kick this thing into overdrive and work with some uh, individuals under my wing and um, and really help them manifest this stuff and bring it into fruition, just like I did. Uh, and I, I want to help some people, helping a lot of people, like just the work that's being done. Right. Uh, and it's so it's so much. I don't know if I would get the accolades. I don't know if I need to, but I can see mm-hmm. the fruit of the labor. Right. When people are listening, they're getting fed up at their job. I don't want to be stuck here the rest of my life. And then they're just moving out of the comfort zone and they're hearing me encourage them, you know, chase that dream. Whatever God has given you, man, you can do it. And this is how I did it and giving them steps in practical ways. So that's really my desire is to people for for to see people walk in their calling. Like, how are you called to be uh, a healer? and a prophet and a poet and a singer, but you're stuck, you know, changing tires for, you know, 60, uh, 55 hours a week. You, you don't feel like singing when you get home. You don't feel like prophesying. We stuck down. So there's like practical ways and things that we can do using the internet and singing our song and people resonate with it and just t- teaching people moving past those blocks because there's all these ungodly beliefs and reasons why we don't deserve to be wealthy or reasons why my, you know, my dad struggled and I just, I'm, I'm just like him and, you know, just weird right. ungodly beliefs that we have. And I really want to help people move, move past that. Well, to bring this stuff you know, into I would fruition. say this too, and I'm not to interrupt you, but like yeah. you, but I'm totally going to interrupt you. Um, what about people that refuse to change tires or wash dishes, but they're so spiritual that you need to follow them? And you know buy what? Their book? We, we talked about this the other Thank day. You. Like, me and <laughs> shout out to Stephen, the voice cook. He was talking about this and how, you know, you just got to hunker down. You got responsibilities. It's not just you anymore. You've got kids. I do know rappers who won't won't go to work. They want to rap and they 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 can't pay their bills and they won't get a job and stuff. And for a season, you got to stay there. You know, right. you got, I, I don't believe in just quitting your job to just, and, and if I wouldn't have been let go from my job, I'd probably still be there. <laughs> I wouldn't have just quit and say, I'm going to be a podcaster. You Are know, it was one of those things they, where, where a guy what, had to push me out there, man. Which uh, you were driving trucks yeah. before. Mm hmm. Which is a great, I mean, to be honest, like if I'm going to pay the bills here in Hawaii, I'm probably going to end up doing Uber. Uber, Amazon, like there's a bunch of really cool driving jobs out there. Those are, yeah, and then I can like I can go live, you know, in between customers and I can meet people. <laughs> I, 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 I would do interviews. I, I did Dude, interviews. Sometimes driving, I wash yeah. dishes just for an extra 50 bucks. Hey, mm-hmm. the dishwasher died or something. Could you like yeah. to, because they all, they're all like about to die. It's so sad here in Hawaii. But I'm like, you know what? I'll stay, I'll stick around and wash dishes at the restaurant. And then I get my little Amazon Kindle and I pull that, I pull out a book and like your book, and then I'll just put it on my Bluetooth. And I'm just in there like in the glory, just washing dishes, learning about <laughs> something cool and making money for it. And yeah. you know, I'm not above that. In fact, I think that washing dishes itself is a blessed thing. Believe it well, or not. you know what? The, here, here's the thing though. There's a lot of people where they, they're content with that. Like I got, I, know, I have friends who yeah. love yeah. taking cars apart. Like that's what that's what gets them going. I got a guy who, if you got a broken lawnmower, he, he'll he'll fix it for free, and he'll spend all evening work. He just loves <laughs> engines and how engines yeah. work and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So for me to be like, oh, you're changing engines and you could be a podcast. Yeah. That's my calling. You know, if you got to find your calling, what does God put within you? You know what I'm saying? And and recapture that. There's people who love changing tires. They they love bagging groceries, man. So to really try to force our dreams upon them um, is a disservice. And I, I think I had to uh, to learn that because I would just be I was so empathic and so sensitive that I was like, oh, look at all these people, you know, just 
bagging groceries, man, my heart would break for them, you know, because I could see people where they're giving up on their dream, you know, but it's not everybody. Some people are right where they're supposed to be. I think we're all right where we're supposed to be. Let me get that straight. I think that we're all, you're changing tires, whatever job you're on, you, you may fit, you may be weary and well doing, but maybe that job is a, is, is an answer to prayer. And that was my thing. I was like, God, I'm tired of this job, man. I'm tired of these people. I'm tired of my dreams taunting me. He's like, look, this was a blood. You prayed for this. You asked for this and I gave it to you. Remember what you were doing? You know what I was doing before I was driving? I was driving another truck, but I was cleaning toilets. I, w- I, was, I would go to work and clean uh, 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 A&M portables. I'd go to weddings and clean their toilets and have the truck and the truck stunk and you know it was a very horrible sewers it was disgusting bro oh my god it was disgusting but um but it was an answer to prayer it was you know just seeing the levels of okay you're doing this you're looking at joseph in the scriptures with joseph like okay right now you in the you in the dungeon now you're down here with the rats and the doo-doo and the feces it's all in the dungeon you're down here with this stuff but if you stay consistent and you keep yeah. working it like I'm going to use you, you know, mm-hmm. you're going to cross Pharaoh and he's got a inter- he's got a dream that nobody can interpret. I want you to uh, interpret yeah. this dream for him. I'm going to give you the revelation and I'm going to open up this door for you. Be, be, be faithful. Be consistent. Don't complain. What if he was on there complaining? Man, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this, man. They were like, hold on. What kind of who you serve? But they looked at him and they knew like, right. look, this is the one who. I said they said all the spirits of all the gods dwell within this guy. He has all the knowledge of all the books. He knows it all. He was he was patient, man, and then he waited yes. for his opportunity when he was to step before Pharaoh and interpret his dream. It's hold on, I need you up here with me. You you're smarter, you got more wisdom than any what are, what are these imbeciles doing with me? Let me pull you out of the dungeon. Let me let me put let me put put some clothes on you. Let me let me give you something good to eat, right? Because he didn't he didn't grow weary and well doing, man. He understood that God, God was training him in those pits and in the dungeons. And no matter where you are, you're right where you're supposed to be. Opportunity will come. You can toil and toil all day and try to connect dots and try to get new jobs and start a, try to start a career and start a podcast. But if, if a man builds the house, his labor is in vain unless the Lord builds it. You right. got to get with the Father yeah. and say, okay, Lord, let me see your hand in this, whatever you're doing. I don't want to be here, but I'm thankful. I got an attitude of gratitude. I know it's a blessing. And just wait for that opportunity because he gives it to every man. He's not a respecter of persons and he's not a man that he should lie. It's equal opportunity. And the Lord is just willing to work with each and every one of us, man. Well, it just, it brings me a lot of peace just to hear you say that too about, I mean, cause you're, you're reaching for the stars, brother. You really are. You're going right to the core of the Bible you know, you're, you're going for everything and, and don't let anybody look down upon you as far as being a younger guy, being a, a cool guy, really like <laughs> doing things that usually people only do when they're like old and, you know, like not that young, man, spiritual looking, <laughs> you're younger than me, man. I'm 36. You're like 24 or something. Anyway, I, I yeah, was like 24. Awesome. It was awesome to see like. Not that, oh, wow, you know, he's not going to make it, whatever he's doing. But it was like, how is he going to keep this up? Like, I think about how hard it is to do what you did, those jobs. And now you're bringing all of that energy into full time yeah. serving the kingdom. What you're yeah. doing, you're doing a great job. You're really talented. You understand technology very well. Now you've written a book. You're an incredible artist, musician, songwriter. Um, filmmaker, you know, and you you bring people together too. That music video, yeah, man, where you have a, a lot of your friends <laughs> all it. singing, that is so cool. Like that is something that's that hard. Really, <laughs> it's the my dad's a professional musician, and he would tell you this: like, there's certain people that are really good at their uh, instrument, but they're not good at connecting with the audience. But when you listen to them, they're like the best violinist or the best pianist. But then there's these musicians that that might not be as good, but they're like really good at connecting with the people and you're as good as they come. I mean, you're skill, skill wise, but you're also able to connect with the people and bring them together. And, you know, when you're in a room with an artist like that, it's just like, yeah, you know, and, and that's what you're doing every day. You're reaching out to people, you're connecting with them. 
and somehow you have time to go into the spirit. Um, we've interviewed um, Amanda Ferez, who um, is in some of your groups, and she – I'm about to upload a, an ascension that she sent me. She's like going – they're tackling huge things. I can tell that she's trained with Obi-Wan. You know, sure. She's got some real skills. Um, I, I believe the same about the other people that go into your – uh, into your classes. So, and I would go too if I had time, I've been like invited to gills. I would go on yours. Um, I can barely keep up with the information at this point with what's going on and do the show and be a dad yeah. and work in Hawaii. For which sure. No, I'm, Hawaii I, I mean, I'm, I'm with you, man. Like I spend yeah. a lot of time talking about this stuff and creating it and, and doing the, the podcast and writing the book that I have to make time to, to go to go in to study for myself you know and um and it's very important it's very crucial you know that that we do that and uh and we we you know hard work good and hard work fun man but you got to first make sure that uh you take care of yourself and take care of your spirit and take care of your head so well i was watching uh, hobbit last night and just tripping out just like <laughs> this is spirit like this is literally spirit we had it on our biggish screen downloaded like an hd version and you're watching it, The Hobbit, the first part of three, and it's like there's a scene where Saruman is having a meeting and Galadriel is standing there and ESP psychically communicating with Gandalf. They're totally like ignoring whatever oh, Saruman yeah, is yeah, blabbering yeah. That's about. That's deep stuff, and brother. And she's like, you brought, the, you brought the sword of such and such, and then he like brings it out and unveils it. You have some stuff here about magical blessed objects, magical staffs, like – I'm looking at this. I'm like, this is Lord of the Rings stuff right here. Psychic Dude, abilities. Like, what is that? I mean, what that is that? Movie, that who doesn't what about, live in that kind of a world? What about yeah. that scene in Lord of the Rings where the king was possessed with a spirit? And he was just yeah. like running amok and he was depressed and he just had a spirit on him. And you go to yeah. him and, and uh, he, was, he, had, he was vexed by a witch. And then uh, Gandalf comes to him and is like, come out of him. And the spirit leaves him and he comes back to his countenance and stuff. I mean, there's so much stuff within the movies, especially Lord of the Rings and going back again to like, um, yes. uh, I mean, so many of them, but Star Wars, Lord of the Rings. I mean, so I wasn't a um, Star Trek fan, but I'm sure there's a bunch that you have seen oh, in there. And I got some, the wrong intro. Oh. I've got some friends who are like just they're, they're like diehard, you know, and they yeah, they see all the allegory in that the Matrix. Everyone sees the allegory in the Matrix, right? In the spiritual dimensions and we're really asleep, but there's a real world within a world. And then there's synchronicities and glitches in the Matrix to say, hey, there's rules to this engagement. Let's learn the rules. The rules are universal law. I think the, I think this, I think his word and his scripture is the, the universal laws as well. But there's a way there's ways for us as sons and daughters to engage when one thing that that that's very inspiring one thing you remind me of is like in the family in the children of god they had spirit beings and specific demons that you would rebuke and angels that you could call on and talk with and channel and i mean yeah it was pretty insane and it wasn't it was not as like amazing as as it sounds it was it was in a, in a way it was kind of treated um, almost as a rote exercise, which was very disappointing, but I wanted all of it. I was like, Oh man, I want to learn more about this. I want to know more about that. And I noticed among the people that had been in there for too long, they, there was a weariness. There was a sense of like, wait, no, this is too much information. I can't keep up with all the prophecies and all the visions and all these, another angel. What? No, I don't want to, you know? And I looked at that. I was like, I can never become that. I can never allow myself to grow weary with revelation. Like I always want to be hungry for more. And if you do that, you will be good ground to watch the, the sequels of the matrix that they're about to release the new star Wars. That's not made by Disney. That's like horrible garbage, but like the actual timeline of star Wars, star Trek, Lord of the Rings, the matrix, every cool movie. It's like, liberating to think like whoa this is all real this is all what we're doing like when i talk to you and i talk to a few other people that i i love talking with and johnny who's who's hosting this again thank you johnny he's sitting there and i know he wants to like, interject so many times he's like i know right? let me he add to like, that he's probably <laughs> talking right now we just can't hear him 
<laughs> yeah, he's doing it just to like keep his sanity. You, oh, by the way, you guys need to listen to Johnny's new show on the French Radio Network. It's hilarious. It's called Biscuit Reviews with Flaky Layers. Hosted by Julian Charles of The Mind Renewed. It's so funny. It's just a review of anything that's reviewable. And I'm going to spoil the future things on that. We're going to do like reviews on reviews. Like there's truly have view, reviews of just random things. Like people have actually reviewed prisons. Oh, and they're God. so funny. <laughs> so we're gonna, but you gotta just. I mean, Johnny is such an antidote to all this spiritual reality. Uh, sorry, religiosity in these spiritual circles that sometimes creeps up. Listen to Johnny Iron. It's like the best medicine for all of us. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Uh, Biscuit Reviews. Check it out on on uh, the French Radio Network.com. Um, okay. Uh, I don't. I just said a million of things. I'm sorry. But yeah, just bringing it down. Like when I was watching Lord of the Rings, I was like, oh my gosh, this is our life. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. This is what I joined the family back in the day to learn all the truth and to learn how to engage with angels. But you have to have faith. God isn't going to just sh- show you everything. Sometimes you'll see an angel. I saw one two days ago. I was lying down. We just brought the baby home. We were exhausted, you know, seven days in the hospital, three days of labor, you know, we were tired and I'm just like lying there on the couch and I just instantly fell asleep and I'm like dreaming and, and the door was wide open. You know, you don't leave your door open in Hawaii. (laughs) Like my wife is there with the baby sleeping and I start to wake up like slowly and I'm, I notice there's a presence. There's a person in the doorway standing there. And I'm, I'm like trying to like see it and I'm trying to wake up. And, and the last thing I remember, I, I woke up and before I was completely awake, but you know, that place in between, I saw that area, that zone. And it was like these two circles at the base of it were intertwining with each other. Like it was some sort of a technology and there was a, and I instantly was like, oh my gosh, guardian angel, you know, cool. My, my daughter's got a cool guardian angel and he's already doing his job. He's like making sure he's standing there at the door making sure nothing, you know, bothers us. That doesn't happen every day, but I've seen things like that and you should look for them. And I bet you, if you listen to truth seeker, you're probably going to see stuff, especially if you buy his book. You yeah, really just, your- just let everybody do that. Let the Lord use you. Just go down there in the description and just click that link. Let the Lord use you. Um, no, I, hey, I mean. Amen. It no, do it, it is, guys. We're, let's put the link in the in all the chats right now. Make I sure think it everybody is. Um, sees We're on this. Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on all of that stuff. Look, just do it, man. Um, Spirit realm. Spirit realm. So yeah, the book just came out today. I'm super excited. You know, we're going into a lot of the contents thereof. It's on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on um, YouTube, it's there in the description as well. But yeah, man, um, this is just, it's so funny too, because I'm just interested because like a lot of the people in the community, they've probably heard me talk about a lot of this stuff because it's stuff that, you know, I talk about on the podcast, but it's like, it's um, um, focused and it's a little bit more contained to where it's all thought out and I didn't miss as much <laughs> as uh, yes. I could have miss, uh, missed or whatever. So, but man, it's um, it's putting it all out there, you know. I, I put it in there, didn't didn't hold back. So there was nothing that I said maybe not, maybe I should. Nope, it's in there. Put it all in there and let the chips fall where they may. Again, I mean, it looks like I'm competing with. Um, in the ranks for um uh what's her name joyce meyer and that would be a blessing to uh beat joyce meyer in the um spiritual warfare category beat joyce meyer Derek. Um, beat her. but but you know just a huge uh blessing and thank you to everybody who's already purchased it um because it's debuted number one new release in christian angelology and demonology we've we've hit the number one new release and oh, yeah. man, that's so awesome. Um, I'm thankful for everybody who believes in my work and who support it and spends their hard earned money to, to allow me to continue doing what I'm doing and continue bringing this content out. I really couldn't have done it without the, the help of my Patreon supporters and everybody who's just had my back for a couple of years now, just rocking with me, man. People have been there since day one and just, man, they've just put their money where their mouth is and they really believe in the work and they, they, they've stuck around, you know, and, um, as much as uh, 
I thought that this book would be something easy to, to write. Um, uh, it's taken a lot of work, a lot of effort. And, um, I told myself that I was just going to, cause I've been, I've been working on it for a year, but it's been off and on right when I started working on it, I was getting up at like four 30 every morning and I'd spend two or three hours on it every morning and I was getting up, but that took a toll on me eventually. Um, so then I just kind of was drifting off of it. And just, so when stuff would come to me, when I get inspired, I'd write to it, been visiting it for about a year, but I, I gave myself, I was like, you know what? I'm going to devote a whole week. I don't have any podcasts lined up and I'm going to, I'm going to miss a week of podcasting and every day I'm just going to devote it to this book and go ahead and finish it up. So I gave myself a week that week turned into two months of, of just grinding and trying to get this stuff out of me and then trying to, um, you know, process the book and get it in the right format, Matt, and take and do the cover and just all of the weird stuff that goes into it. I had people that are like, look, I'll do it for you. $1,500. Oh, no, sir. We got this. Let me do it. The Lord's blessed me to uh, be able to do some of this stuff. So um, I couldn't have done it without the Patreon supporters. There's no way how much time and effort and energy has been, went into this book. So I just want to say again, a huge thank you every time to um, everybody partnering with me and, and the vision that God's given me via Patreon. You guys rock. Man, Patreon, gosh, like I've been blessed through that so many times and, you know, and, and I always say, look, if you can't, if you're, you know, uh, just trying to barely cover the rent, you know, don't, don't give me your money, but at least what you can do is share the link with all your friends. You can take a link. Yeah. Like the one, the link to this, uh, book and this interview and you can put it in facebook on messenger on your phone and you can hit select all to every facebook friend and send them the message of it really? you can do that that doesn't cost you anything oh you yeah can, you can yeah, message right every you can message everybody can, the link messenger on facebook allows you to take a link look i'll do it right now I'm, show me because watch, everybody's about to get my me. book link right to their <laughs> inbox dude totally i mean you can can you do select, it on the computer or this is the phone I think you have to do it on the phone. Well, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Let me try the computer here. Okay, let's try it on the computer because this is something that you guys can do. We're not trying to do this to like spam everybody, but no, I'm, but you're getting spam spam tonight. Everybody. No. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the t this is the time to buy the book. You know? Yeah, the uh, release date for sure. If you can't buy it, the least you can do is is just send it to everybody. Yeah. If it you can't awesome. buy it, if you can't buy it. And you're listening to this as it airs, October the 16th, and you're rocking with us an hour and 22 minutes into the podcast. If you can't buy it, you don't get paid till next week, whatever it is, and you can't buy it, message me. I'll buy it for you. Um, somebody's, somebody has sent me a donation to do that for those of you who want the book but cannot afford it. Inbox me, and we will send you the money to buy it like preferably tonight so that we can beat out Joyce Myers for real. If you can't buy it and you're listening Joyce to this Myers. right now, if you don't have a job, if you're, you can't, you know, you don't, you just don't have extra. Hit me up. We'll send you a copy tonight, tonight only, not on the replay, not on the re air tonight. If you need a copy and you're not able to afford it, message me, email me, get to me tonight and we'll send it to you. I will send you the money so that you can order it and leave a five-star review. <laughs> I'm trying to find out how to send it to everybody, but I mean, okay, the very least you can do is go push forward a message and then just hit like send, 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 send. It, don't, it just takes a second. Look, I'm doing it right now. Boom. Um, okay, Leah, message me. Boom. There will be a Kindle edition. It's kind of being uploaded now. Um, but if you want, okay, if you want the Kindle edition or at least the PDF, I had a buddy of mine who was waiting for the PDF. I said, look, buy the, yeah. buy, buy the physical edition and I will go ahead and send you the PDF like instantly to your mm -hmm. phone where you have it now to read it on your phone or iPad or computer. I mean, so just let me know if that's what you want. We'll do that. I'm working on, I'm getting into audible too. I want to start, um, I bought this Kindle to learn about how to use, um, audiobooks with a book like you write a book and then you have an audio like what and you inspired me actually with your guided meditation yeah into the presence i thought that was so cool so 
And then I saw this Netflix called Bandersnatch, where you get to choose your own adventure through the movie. And except it's like evil. So I was like, man, if there wasn't, if it was only something like that was about heaven that had cool sound effects and interesting and you get the visuals pick. and you get to pick at the end. Yeah. So I started this whole thing um, and it's free. It's on, it's on spirit wars media.com. It's just, it's in right there, but, but we got pretty far in it, but I realized like, nobody's going to listen to this if it's for free. Like I actually need to publish it on Amazon and um, we, I took time recording it, putting sound effects yours you were the inspiration though dude like it was like man i want to try this i um last night dude i i was asked to come to a group of um people who are going through aa and uh, i was a group of men and um they're there by court appoint uh, a, a court appointed to go to these aa classes and my buddy oh, yeah. steven steven the voice cook hit me up and was like hey we're talking about spirituality like this week's thing is spirituality and i'd love to have you come and maybe do a meditation so Mm -hmm. i ended up getting to come and it was it was it was beautiful man i was able to uh speak to the guys and and i knew that it was resonating with them man just the words i can feel it just kind of cutting through and just giving them hope and stuff you know it's so i have to make myself not cry when i didn't even early on just talking about the goodness of god i just like jeremiah was a weeping prophet i have to like don't do it man when i just get in i I tap into the father's heart and it just really resonates Mm -hmm. you know and even last night was like that i just had to kind of make my uh, who's a stranger just weeping over them you know (laughs) and trying to have a Mm. conversation so anyway i I got to speak to them and uh, and and i I, we we did a short guided meditation where i just kind of got them relaxed and everything and then i played the throne room meditation they turned the lights down and they all went in and oh. did the throne room meditation, man. These guys, none of them were like really spiritual. They went around the table and it's like, I used to go to church. That's about it, you know, and kind of gave their story and where they were spiritually. And some of them have yeah. never meditated and to, to do a meditation like that and have never have been into it, man. Some mm-hmm. of them got rocked, man. It was just a beautiful, beautiful encounter last night. So I was blessed to be a part of that. Thank you, Steven, for that, bro. Thank you, Steven. Yeah, and just whatever you get inspired to do, just do it, man. And you're going to inspire other people to do stuff. You're a trendsetter, and we need to protect you, too, because I've noticed with, like, Jordan Peterson, you know, I was just going on a little jag about him a few days ago, and it's like, he's in rehab right now because, yeah. you know, he's, I believe he's so inspired, he's so brilliant, and and that kind of instrumentation that he is, that that he carries is very delicate, you know, and if, if there was only like an army of people around Jordan Peterson to make sure he's like getting enough rest and, <laughs> and, but I mean, he's, and maybe this is the Lord, you know, that he's going to really meet the Lord at this time. Cause he hasn't really met the Lord yet. So, uh, we're praying for him, but, but, you know, I'm glad that there's, you've got the next agers, you know, Gil and Berlin and uh, the kingdom talks crew. And, and there's just such a community of people that, that love you, that want to, that want to watch your back as yeah. you're continuing in your, you are a spearheading force, trailblazing yeah, sure. icebreaker. And then when you discover these different areas, you're going to also inspire other people to, to do things and to yeah. grow in new areas. So just keep going with it, man. Don't, yeah. don't doubt yourself. Keep opening up new portals and, you know, we're going to see pretty cool things happen, brother. So. For sure, man. The cap, the capstone of the book is, uh, I talk about all these spirits and aliens and all this really cool stuff, and but the yeah. capstone is Jesus, man. You know, he is the, the cornerstone, and um, and I just talk about, you know, how none, none of those experiences, no matter how beautiful they are, to compare with the majesty, the beauty, and splendor of King Jesus. And how he bids us yeah. all to come and have a beautiful encounter with him, and uh, and wouldn't it be kind of like a, a slap in the face to like, I know we can hang out with Jesus, but I'd rather go hang out with the angels, you know, I'd rather go hang out with the elementals, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, how about Jesus? Will you show me them? Go ask the Father. Go through yeah. Him. He is the gate. I wouldn't say go to any of these. Don't do nothing without that you don't see the Father doing, and eventually you learn that. You learn the father's heart and you see just as Jesus did what the father was only what he saw the father doing. You learn and that's how to treat people. That's how to walk in the spirit. That's how to operate in the ethers. And you learn that. And it's through fellowship with Christ. And so uh, the end of the book I go into, it's not a long chapter, um, but 
the Thank splendor, you. majesty of Jesus and an encounter with him. And I go into a very mystical experience that I had um, with with Christ and uh, and how he appeared to me uh, in the spirit and uh, really rocked my world. So all of that stuff's in there, too. And I just kind of end with that. Well, it's it's going to just be like starting a new entire universe. Um, I've man, I've got to write a book, man. You're going to inspire. I've already seen people commenting. They're like, oh, I want to write a book now. <laughs> so you're going to start something, dude. Yeah, dude, like creativity, bro. And like when you're operating yeah. in, in who God's called you to be and you inspire people like that was just the biggest thing is like pulling right. that creativity out of people. And I'm just paying it forward. I mean, there was just beautiful songs and artists and bands and things that I've heard over the years that pulled it out of me. You know what I'm saying? And has taken taken me on journeys and opened me up to higher realms of understanding and put secrets in their music or put secrets in their interviews. I'm like, hey, you're speaking my language now. Right. So. um, Cool. uh, and, for, and so now I can do that. Like, what the heck? It's so it's so crazy to be able to pay that forward, you know, and be able to be that soundtrack for somebody's spiritual awakening with the music or with the podcast or with the teachings or whatever, man. It's just so it's such an honor. Um, this walk that God has blessed me with. Are you saying there are occult weird secrets hidden in your book? <laughs> Spirit. Yeah, realm. for sure. There's there's Cryptic there's um, hidden mystery hidden Easter knowledge. eggs. There's hidden knowledge that I revealed. You know, it's not a secret anymore. It's not a cult anymore because it's not hidden. The word occult means to hide. What does George Maxwell say? See my hand? Now my hand is in a cult because my hand is hidden. This, this is oh, the, it's the yeah. Spanish word for hidden. Latin. The, to occult something means to hide something. And, uh, and, and, and what is hidden in the dark shall be brought to the light. Jesus, I believe Jesus shared occult knowledge. Knowledge that only a few people could understand. It's esoteric. What are you talking about? You want us to eat your flesh and drink your blood? Oh, I'm done with this guy. This is a cannibal group. And they left. He's like, what are you? You don't get it? And he looks at the disciple, man, blessed are you guys because you, I was joking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I wasn't being for real, you know? And, uh, you know, and, and again, I have greater things to show you, but you, you're not ready for it. And, uh, and, and, you know, it's just... It's a cult just means hidden. It's nothing demonic or satanic or whatever. And if it's brought to the light, it's not hidden anymore. So, well, it's paving the way to go into more deeper revelations, mysteries, going into the universe, finding out about. Well, the space is a cult. They they've been to people have been beyond the moon. That's pretty much hands down understood by most that are aware and the reason they're not telling us is there's so much occult there's so much weird spiritual stuff out there in space yeah and, i don't and, know why they... it turns out it's not the final frontier the final frontier is the spirit it's your spirit it's inside of you already yeah that's the weird paradox so that's where you actually you're like jumping in that realm all the time so one more reason to buy spirit realm angels demons and the sovereignty of god well, it's an honor to interview you finally. And now that you have your book, you are welcome to come on Spirit Wars, Mishpoha. No, seriously, you can't go on Supernatural unless you have a book. So now you're allowed Notice to Notice that. I'm going on. I'm, I'm going to. I'm prophesying right now. I will be on it. It's Supernatural. And I will be on. Co- even bigger than that, I'm going on Coast to Coast AM. Let's prophesy that. That's been oh, a yeah. Turn. No problem. Oh, I manifested no. Carrie. I, there. I manifested yeah. Carrie Cassidy. I'm once on her show. I manifested talking to Busy Bone, my favorite rapper. I I'm, I'm manifested getting to, to meet my favorite, one of my favorite celebrities who was in, in a, texting me in a band. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say his name right now. I'll show you pictures when we hang out. But I'm blown away, man. I manifested. And it's not just me. I'm not saying I'm doing it. You guys can do it. Don't just watch me. I hope I move you to jealousy. Yes. I hope you see, I hope you see my beautiful book and you just get jealous. But I hope that it's a righteous jealous, man. I hope that it I moves you. you. I hope that it moves you to do something. So you know what? I can I can write a book. And, and you do it with clean hands and a pure heart, but you get up off your butt because we have the same 24 right. hours in a day. When I am telling you, when I was pumping toilets, I'm writing songs. Wow. Uh, so, something pops in my head, I'm writing it down. When I was driving, I'd pull over. 
I do interviews. They call me for an interview. I'm, at, I'm taking my lunch break on an interview with a national radio show. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you got to get it in. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Oh, you just, yeah. you got your foot in the door. Man, come on, man. Nobody, nobody gave us a shot. We opened the door for ourselves, man. We seen what the Lord was doing and, and, he, and, and followed him. And all of these things, this book, the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, this book is a key. The book is a key. That's all it mm-hmm. is. And it's going to open and unlock doors and realms and dimensions that I've never been able to step into. And the, 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 the book is just going to be a key to open that. The book is going to be a key to coast to coast. The book is going to be a key into a larger audience of people who need what we're doing. It's not just me. They're going to find out who you are. They're going to find out who Gil is. We're a family, man. We're a people. We're friends, man. We, we, we are in this together. It's not about me. And, uh, and we have to understand that. And once we do, we find out that we are the body of Christ and nobody, not even the gates of hell, shall be able to prevail against it because that's who we are. You might even find your wife through these, these communities or your right. husband. I think you're setting up a community as well. And just by doing this, I mean, I'm looking at the chat and I'm just, I'm just giggling, Amanda. <laughs> Tracy, bless you. There's all these encouraging, sweet messages. You guys are my favorite people. Like this community, this is my tribe right here. These people. (laughs) The weirdos. I know for a fact, just from, and I haven't even met you physically or any of, almost anybody. But but I've, whenever I do, it's like, brother, you know, it's just the same. It's like I already knew them for so long. And then I'm finally meeting like a relative. We have That's camaraderie with so people, fun. man, especially those who are in the Lord and in the spirit. And um, yes, I let ran- like I've, I've let a lot of random people just come and stay with us and sleep on our couch and sleep on the air mattress. And I have never met them, but they've but but in the spirit, I know them by the spirit. The Bible says to know them that labor amongst you. You know, if you're sticking around, man, like if you we, we, we kind of give you a, a way out. You know what I'm saying? I try like I almost try to make people leave. Oh, yeah? What about this? You still going to love me after I tell you that I do this? You still going to love me that I, when you find out that I'm, I'm a human, that I'm not superhuman special? You know what I'm saying? That I am anointed, but I'm a regular guy? You know what I'm saying? They try to kill that facade. And it's like a lot of times people leave because they're looking for a superhero. They're looking to follow somebody. No, we follow Christ. You follow me Amen. as I follow Christ. That example. That's it. And guess what? I want to follow your example. Let's interview Amanda. Let's interview Sonny. Let's interview these people and see how their uh, walk with the Lord is. I'm interested in it all. And we have to be able to learn from everybody because they have something that that uh, to bring to the table that we don't have. And we have to have to, to be a teacher. You have to have a teachable spirit. I'll never learn and sit under anybody arrogant and pompous and feel like they have it all figured out. No. Yeah, you may have these other people fooled, but you don't have me fooled. You can fool, uh, what is it? You can, you can't, you can fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool all the people all the times. Yeah, you can't. I can see through it. I'm not gonna do it, you know. And I and I hope that people can resonate with that, and I hope that they see it. You got to get out of celebrity Christianity. You got to quit following men. The Bible says, "Cursed is the man that trusts in man." You're going to be cursed. You follow a man and end up in a ditch. We follow the spirit of God. It's always moving and we move in unity as the spirit gives unction. And just to when we do that, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful song and dance of how this thing works and honoring people for who they are, yeah. how deep they are, or how, man, I, I love it all. They say, come, you know, people come to say, well, I can't see in the spirit like you. Well, maybe you're not supposed to. What can you do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, what can you bring to the table? And everybody's gifted and they have we learn from everybody bro and i'm even talking about some of these unbelievers and stuff like i'm learning from them okay what i'm lear- learning from uh, you just mentioned them uh jordan peterson well i seen somebody comment on your post to say well he's into allegory and thinks that the bible isn't you need to study the bible allegory you're trying to get another like there's like seven different revelations for each scripture and by doggone it allegory is definitely one of them and how that relate and then allegory is simply how that relates to you in your life, how it plays through as a story, as a story within a story that's really telling your story. Yes. And um, it's, yes. I, it's so that's deep. Where, again, I mean, just that moment of looking at Galadriel and Gandalf discussing a holy supercharged item 
And you're like, man, I always wish I could live in that kind of a world. And it's like, wait a second. <laughs> Every time I go on on a live stream with my brother, or even if I just go solo, or if I participate in someone else's live stream, it's like suddenly there's Tracy Mihalek. You putting all the emojis, crazy cool people. Mm-hmm. That I mean, if you ever listen to Tracy's stories about interacting with entities from other realms, like. What? Oh my gosh! Message like, me, Tracy. I have not heard Tracy. her stories. I want to hear them. Message me. You have got to hear Tracy. Oh man, internet is not working. Oh, oh. are we still live? Yeah. Okay, good. You know. Yeah, we've got to interview her. Um, Amanda's got some crazy cool things and marathon. There's just the list of cool people, and but it just instead of being like, oh, how are we going to handle all these people? It's like, don't worry, the Lord's got it. Just enjoy it. You're in Middle Earth. This is the <laughs> spirit war, you know, Star yeah. Trek, Seekers of the Truth, Kingdom Age, trippers, people that are like, oh, like eating up everything Ian Clayton's got, you know, and then they're like, well, I want more of this. And then they're like, ah, and then they find they find us and we're out here every day putting out content for free the least you can do is buy spirit realm angels demon spirits the sovereignty of god go and check it out i made it available you know share the links if you can't buy it but please buy it and and then get in touch be on the chats you know share the chats talk to get to know other people and and then i recommend people start to do it themselves too you know don't wait for us to interview you Start putting out your stories. <laughs> yeah, you look at someone get a cosign. You know, you, yeah, them cosigns. We'll you, you'll find you. you'll find out them cosigns ain't nothing. Like some people say, well, you just need the right person to retweet it, or you just need to get that one right. interview. I mean, you got to make it. Ain't nobody finna. They don't want it yeah. as much as you want it. You know yes. what I'm saying? They don't want it as much as you. And you you have a vision, and you have to you have to bring it into fruition. God's given you the vision. He didn't give somebody else the vision. He gave it to you, and so you have to run with it. Right. So. Amen. So many visions, so much to, to talk about. I, I recommend, guys, let's just go into the spirit. Just all the things that you're seeing, it's in this book. It's like you're going to get affirmation for what you probably already know deep down, but you haven't read it yet. Yeah. As, jo- as Jordan Maxwell said, it needed to be written. This is a book that was was waiting to be put into into form, into compact form. And um, yeah. So anyway, brother, thank you for joining us today. And uh, I want to thank Johnny for producing this show. Is there any last things you want to share here? The uh, chat's like so fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any chats Tracy. you want to read? Tracy, the, the weirdos are the most loyal. Amen. We embrace our weird and love others weird in him. Yeah. Let your so freak good. flag fly. For sure. Um, man, I mean, that just, I think it sums it up. There's just so much to talk about in the book. Again, shout out to Brett Stacy. He purchased it, sent me his link. But he, uh, again, I'm, it's the number one release today in Christian angelology and demonology. I'm creeping up on spiritual warfare and um, spiritualism. But wouldn't that be awesome to have the number one book in Christian spiritual warfare? That would be awesome. Go buy the book, guys. Help me come up in the ranks. And I, I guarantee it'll, it'll bless you. Again, you mentioned, you know, the magical staffs. And, and that, that whole that whole chapter is just interesting. Um, talking about the magical staffs and that Moses and Aaron had and the wizard staff and stuff like that. But going back to the blessed items and the cursed items for you know for any of this to be true for there to be any truth on one side that that polar opposite has to be true as well so for there to be cursed items or people talk about items that um you know this i feel like there's a ghost on here or there's something attached to this dresser or this mirror is is a very old mirror i just keep seeing shadows in the mirror you know what i'm saying we hear about all this stuff all the time with these spirits that are attached to it well for there to be blessed uh, cursed items there's got to be blessed items as well so it goes into um uh, the apostle paul praying over his handkerchiefs and sending his handkerchiefs out when the people got the handkerchief they were healed and he's blessing these items and stuff like that and um even going into the the horseshoe the rabbit's foot and the lore these items that give you good luck to have them and just how the mind connects to that if they don't hold any significance it's the placebo if i can just touch the hem of his garment i really don't think that there was much power in jesus's garment but it was the fact that she knew her faith was like if i can just touch the hem of his garment i'll be healed 
you know, and that's what she did. And she was healed. She got what she was looking for. So I go into all that stuff. And um, this is very, very important because the uh, Drudge Report yesterday had an article. I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to go live about this. So I read it all and discussed it. But there's a there was like a haunted doll that uh, curses. It's like a hundred year old porcelain doll. It was on TV and talk about cursed items like that's where man, annabelle comes from I, I, I almost covered that like that's where the annabelle story oh, yeah? comes from i didn't cover oh, that wow. because i wanted just some more fringe stuff and that's just kind of one everybody resonated with i might have mm -hmm. mentioned it i don't know but um that's de that's definitely where that comes from the cursed doll that people are having in their house and they take the story and run with it you know oh yeah yeah you do not want to yeah we, we just need to pray over everything and I think we are both in agreement that we bless all of you guys, our listeners, and bless your house. And um, may the Lord yes. show you if there's anything in your house that shouldn't be there. And mm -hmm. the same for us because we're in like – I'm telling you, I live – I'm surrounded by Buddhist temples and Japanese Shinto shrine stuff. And I'm in America. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever. I found a shrine that has a dedication to George Washington, a Japanese Shinto shrine for George <laughs> Washington. Like what the heck? I covered George Washington in the book. <clears throat> no, get out yeah, of town. He had a, he had a, he had an angelic uh, visitation that gave him the vision of America, and it, it oh, was yeah. recorded. And so I went into that and talked about I talked about all these people who founded something profound that had an encounter. Uh, uh, Apostle Paul uh, uh, yeah. encountered Jesus, this bright light that yes. knocked him off his horse. You know, that's right. Um, you know, what I'm saying Muhammad, Joseph Smith, all of these people who claim to have angelic interaction that changed the course of their life. Now, did they really have that encounter? Or are they making it up? Is it a an easy uh, vouch? Well, it wasn't me. It was an angel. I didn't say that. God said it. You know what I'm saying? It's easy cosign. Um, so it, there's a bit of skepticism. Now, most of the people know who hang around me. Like, I, I'm I'm skeptic. I want to know. I want to make sure that this is what we're right. entertaining. Like, I like well, to have fun. You're and, scientific. And, I would say you're not, like, doubting. I mean, and, and me too. I try to not get all emotional about yeah. stuff. But when I see something, I'm going to say something. There's a know? difference. There's a, I think there's a difference in, like, like closing your eyes and let's go to Mars. Wow. Like, I got friends who would do that. Right. Maybe they can. Yeah. But for me, like... A, you don't a, do that? It's, a, it's a long process. It's not yeah. instant. No, I'm talking yeah. about I'm talking about going deep into the trance where you're like you're going in, man. Mm -hmm. You're going in. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like we can imagine stuff, but I'm like, wanna did I imagine that or did I really encounter it? Like we're talking about I'm more concerned even with all these people I've had I've some of these deep people who I've had on my show. Mm -hmm. and we're talking about angels and they've never seen anything. It's all mm -hmm. spiritual. It's all almost in theory. What changed right. what changed my life was seeing stuff in the physical. Mm -hmm. Like I've had these things literally come through. You know what I'm saying? I've seen these think, in the like, physical. If you see too many things, then you kind of lose your faith bucks for it, like your spirit bucks, because, you know, you don't have to have faith to believe it. You just saw it. But well, if you didn't well, see it and you believe you have more like what is what was it? Jesus may, said? Maybe Sweet. maybe for faith. But for me, it was like. Because then you have the skeptics who say, see, it's all faith. You're just making it up. It's just a belief. But it's like, for me, it like it like was a validation that like heaven is for real. Like heaven is yes. a place and angels travel back and forth from heaven to earth and carry messages. And it's literally out there amongst the stars. And you mm. can see them if you want to. If you go out there for long enough and you pray and ask the Father and just look, you'll be able to see them. Like that's different than just close your eyes. I can see heaven. Mm. Like, like literally... God, where they are, and him like letting you see them travel, like literally, other people are witnessing it with you, demons, all of it. There's something there when when it crosses the threshold from the spirit realm into this reality, and and mm -hmm. I, that's the ones I really now I'm, I love all the spiritual stuff too. Don't get me wrong, but I'm really intrigued when they cross over, right? When you pull something out. I had a friend recently uh, contact me and, and he was telling me about this. He's like, yeah, we're, we're, we're not going to release this information yet, but we're basically having encounters with angels like a lot. And, and I'm like, really tell me more. And he's, and he's like, well, I can't really get too deep it's but, in the book. You got to buy it. And just know that book. it's, <laughs> Oh yeah, no, there's going to be a ton. And, but just the fascinating thing, the whole subject is so cool because he was like, 
the most kind of disappointing thing is like how normal they are. They're like so human. They're like so much like us. It's like meeting you or you're talking to me. It's like you met an angel. I mean, that's the thing. It's like you want it to just blow your socks off. It, yeah, it's supernatural. We're talking to an angel right now. Oh, it's wait, you're an angel. Okay. You know, that was cool. Like, I, and I think we're going to need to normalize the supernatural a little bit more so that yeah. we just operate it automatically. And you know, like what if I was like crying and peeing in my pants, like every time I got a message from Derek Grosskirth, well, I kind of do, but you know, you know, that's like, that's what it's going to be like. It's like, you're talking to Trixica, like, Oh, you're talking to an angel. You're talking to Jesus. This is just reality. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're normalizing it to a point where it's an everyday thing. You know, every day you can listen to the show. You can open that book. And I think that's one of our, one of our things that we're seeing. I have to jump off here. I have to take this call. Thank you guys for hanging out. All right. Turn that up and we'll just fade it out from there. (laughs) Good. All right, guys. Bless you guys.